Hey, in this series, we have already analyzed the aerodynamics, the structures, the configuration, the propulsion, and the systems of the Suhoi 57. Now it's time to dig deep into the sensors. The Russians divide them in two groups, the SH-121 electronic suite and the, the 101 KS electro-optic system. In this episode, we cover the electro-optics. Intro! The 101 KS electro-optic suite is developed by which is actually acts as the system integrator. The code name during the development was Atoll, so this is another name that is commonly used to refer to it. Even in this case, the critical information is secret, but as usual, we probably know enough to make some educated guesses. So the Atoll has a double purpose. To, the first is to contribute to the situational awareness in the optic and infrared domain. The second is to defend the aircraft from missile attack with a large degree of automation and autonomy. And to do so, it actually integrates several different subsystems. Um, Otis, please tell our viewers which are these systems. The 101 KSV infrared search and track. The 101 KSU 01 and 02 missile approach warning system. The 101 KSON directional infrared countermeasures. The 101 KSP for night and low level flight. The 101 KSN navigation and targeting pod. The UV 50-01 chaff and flare dispensers. The EC 260 Delorme coffee machine. The Typhoon BL 420840 blender. Thank you, Otis. I appreciate the irony. So the Su-57 infrared search and track is just an air-to-air -air sensor, but it is integrated with all the other sensors in the data fusion, which is a peculiar characteristic of this aircraft. Always remember that an infrared search and track is not a forward-looking infrared. The infrared search and track is not a tool to produce images, albeit every modern infrared is actually capable of doing so. The infrared search and track is a tool that passively scans a portion of the sky to produce a track similar to the track produced by the radar that is actually shown to the pilot on the head-up display, the, the presentation screens, uh, or anywhere else. The KSV, like all modern infrared search and tracks, can scan and track multiple targets remaining either completely passive or using a laser to find the distance. The Earst ball, when not in use, can turn backward and the back of the ball is covered by rather absorbing materials to improve stealth. The 101 KSU uh, 01 and 02 are, they are actually the same sensor included in a double or single casing. The double casing is shaped like a wedge and contain a sensor on each side of the wedge. They are located above the fuselage, toward the back, and just below the cockpit. Two single sensors are installed on the side, right aft of the cockpit. These sensors work in the ultraviolet band, uh, where they can detect the huge ultraviolet emission of the rocket engines. Ultraviolet sensors are very accurate directionally and are very difficult to fool, but they have the intrinsic weakness of being effective only when the rocket engine is on. A missile that has exhausted its propulsion won't be identified. Furthermore, the ultraviolet band tend to be absorbed quite a lot by the atmospheric humidity and in bad conditions, in bad weather, the effectiveness of the sensors is actually diminished. To compensate for the intrinsic problems of the, of the ultraviolet sensors, the Suhoi 57 also directional infrared sensors. The 11KSON is quite a sophisticated system. It is contained into a small dome attached to a relatively small black box. It's not actually black, but you get the point. The Su-57 has two of them, one above and one below the fuselage. The sensors scan the space around the aircraft and if they detect a missile, they flash a laser uh, toward the sensor. The purpose is to confuse the missile guidance and deviate it off target. No use to say it actually works with infrared guidance, 
I don't expect it to be effective in any form with radar guidances. The infrared sensors can identify a missile even if the engine is off and they are more resistant to bad weather, but they tend to have problems at low altitude where the missile can be confused against the warmer background of the terrain. Some may say that for a country often covered with snow is not a big problem, but yeah, we don't know for sure. An interesting additional feature is the possibility for the pilot to actually see the pictures, the images captured by these sensors, albeit probably not in augmented reality mode. However, it is a nice addition to the situational awareness. The 101 KSP, on the contrary, provides a picture that can be used with the augmented reality. It is a small infrared camera installed on the left nacelle under the wing, and its primary purpose is to work with the radar to improve the terrain following and low altitude navigation capability. The picture taken from this camera can be combined with the picture taken from the infrared search and track and the targeting pod to let the pilot see through the aircraft fuselage pretty much like what happens with the DAS on the F-35. The test pilots say that when the system is activated, it gives them the surreal impression of sitting outside of the aircraft uh, with nothing around them. The 101 KSN is a bespoke system developed uh, specifically for the Suhoi 57. The designers explicitly said that it was inspired by the American Sniper X and it has roughly the same capabilities. Like many pods of this type, it has a rotating optical assembly with a visible light and medium infrared sensor. It can lock onto a target and track it while the aircraft moves. Like other targeting pods, it has an infrared laser that can be used for various uh, purposes. It can be used as a laser designator, it can be used as a telemeter, or it can be used as a marker for uh, the troops on the ground or other assets. The UV5001 is a chaff and flares dispenser which is a bit different than the western implementations. The plane has three units in the tail section, two facing upward and one facing downward. The system in flight is covered with a lid that it opens only when the system or the pilot actually order the release of chaffs and flares. Under the lid each unit has 14 50 millimeters barrels, each one housing a cartridge. <laughs> there are nine different types of cartridges and the system is supposed to release the best combination depending on the specific threat. The main peculiarity is that some of the cartridges are actually active decoys. They basically have the same role as the tau decoys that are found on some western planes. So in the last two episodes we have discussed the Suhoi 57 sensors, we have seen the radars, we have seen the electro-optics and we have learned that the Su-57 has one of the most complete sensor suite ever installed on an aircraft. It features a number of uh, original solutions that are different from the kind of solution that is used in the West. If you want, the big unknown is exactly the level of integration and automation, but uh, in the next episode, we will cover what everybody is waiting for, the armament, but in the meanwhile, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me, because there is a ton of information that, if you haven't watched them, is available about the Suhoi 57 and a lot of other stuff that you will find incredibly interesting. So stay tuned. Bye!